we are still with set operation. Last time we spoke about set intersection. In this video, we shall speak about set union. What is set union? Given two sets A and B, their union denoted by this symbol is the set of elements that belong to either A or B or both. We shall no longer say this or both because when an element is an element of the set union, then it also implies that it can be a member of both A and B. In math language, this whole thing is written in this manner. A union B is equal to X such that X is element of A or X is element of B. Pay attention to the connective. When the operation is union, the connective is OR. When the operation is intersection, the connective is AND. Find the union of sets. Suppose we have these three sets. What is A union B? Okay, so A union B is 4, 5, 6, and 7. How about B union C? B union C is this one, 1, 5, 6, 7. So pay attention to this. Even though 7 is element of both A and B, we do not list 7 twice. We just list the elements once. A union B union C is equal to that. So remember, we do not repeat the listing of elements and okay, uh, the order with which we write down the elements does not matter. It does not affect the identity of your set. So in this case, we can jumble the listing of these elements and still it is equal to the set union. Inclusion exclusion principle. For any finite sets A and B, okay, what is this? This is the cardinal number of A union B. That is the number of elements contained in A union B. And what does the inclusion exclusion principle tell us? The inclusion there has something to do with addition, and the exclusion there has something to do with subtracting or taking away. So, the cardinal number of A union B is equal to the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B minus the number of elements in their set intersection. From our previous example, this is our A and our B. When we took the set union, A union B is this one. It has four elements. So let us apply your inclusion-exclusion principle just to verify that the cardinal number of A union B is 4. Okay? So the cardinal number of A union B is equal to the number of elements in A, 3, the number of elements in B, which is 2, minus the number of elements in their set intersection. How many elements are contained in A intersection B? It's 1. Because 7 is what is common between A and B. So the reason why we have to exclude the elements in the set intersection is, if we were not to do that, we will be double counting some elements. Okay, if we shall count 3 and then we shall count 2, we double counted the element 7. That is the idea behind the inclusion-exclusion principle. To get the number of elements in the set union, we add the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B, and then we subtract or we exclude the number of elements that is contained in A intersection B. Apply set union on investing. In a survey of 500 investors, it was reported that 270 invested in stocks. 300 inv invested in bonds, and 100 invested in both stocks and bonds. Use Venn diagram to answer the following. How many invested in stocks only? How many invested in bonds only? How many neither invested in stocks nor in bonds? So let's say, for example, this is our universal set, and this is the set of investors who put their money in stocks. 
This is the set of investors who put their money in in bonds. Okay, so the technique here is to begin at the set intersection. 100 invested in both stocks and bonds. We put 100 there. Next, it says here it was reported that 270 invested in stocks. So since we already have 100 here, the number of investors that is in this region is 170. Okay, and together, that's 170 plus 100, which is equal to 270. Going back to our problem, 300 invested in bonds. But we already have 100 there. So the rest of the 200 is here in this region. How do we interpret this region? So this region would contain the investors who put their money in bonds only. This one represents the investors who invested their money in stocks only. So the number of investors who invested in the set union as union B is 170 plus 100 plus 200, that is 470. But our investors are 500. So that means we have 30 more investors who did not invest in either stocks or bonds. Okay, so we are now prepared to answer this. How many invested in stocks only? 170. How many invested in bonds only? 200. How many invested in neither stocks nor bonds? It's 30. Let us use our inclusion-exclusion principle. So how do we get the number of elements or the number of investors that are or that put their money in either stocks or bonds. So it is equal to N of S plus N of B minus N of S intersection B. So that is going to be, okay, so 270 plus 300 minus 100, which is equal to 470. How do we interpret this math sentence? So this is the number of investors who put their money in stocks only. Because we remove this, we remove this. From this set, we remove 100. How do we interpret this? So this is the number of investors who put their money in bonds only. 300 minus 100 is 200. How do we interpret this? Okay, can you recall the meaning of this? The complement of the union of S and B. This set here is the set of elements outside S union B. And using that symbol, this means this is the number of investors that did not put their money in either stocks or bonds. That is how you interpret this. And it is equal to 500 minus... 470, which is equal to 30.